negatives were tested. HLV-specific DNA subsets were found in 403 of the 409 antibody positives, but none of the antibody negative people, 10. While these claims and statements are not at all substantiated in the further reading, 3. It becomes obvious that he simply cannot have correctly read this publication which clearly touches clinical aspects, and that he thereby risks grossly violating his scientific ethics. And when those ethical gentlemen, Duisburg's colleagues, two of the world's leading retrovirologists Robert Gallo and Robin Weiss are invoked, without doubt about their claims either for having re-isolated only HIV from Montagne's virus stock without recognizing any further contamination. Peter Duisburg's pseudo-rationale needs an explicit comment. If one looked for other retroviruses, in Montagne's stock, they would be found in great numbers these days. The human genome carries thousands of such genes that can be traced back to the action of reverse transcription 3 and were named retroviral elements by retrovirologists in an ad hoc decision 2. In Robert Gallo's humiliated hunt for a credible new retrovirus, he was not taking care over or notice of grossly contaminating viruses, but instead mixed up together. It actually happened the materials of 10 patients in order to be able to create HLV 2. Gallo himself wrote in a very important statement of the 27th September 1983, after the decisive conference in Cold Spring Harbor, quote, The virus described by Montagne I have never seen sick, and I guess that he has a mixture out of two. On the other side some of his data are interesting but not at all conclusive. When Duisburg urges, as I pointed out in my missing virus reward claim in the July-August continuum, Infectious HLV DNA has been isolated from infected cells several times by molecular cloning. He himself is honest enough to claim that this infectious HIV DNA has been isolated, not out of old-patients, but from special infected cells. He conceals that those cells underwent a very particular treatment and had DNA added before. 2, 3. He cites only literature in which ex cathedra the same claim as his is made without a single reference that the importuned infectious HIV DNA was detected in or isolated from a virus. 3. Predictably, three references, Fisher, et al., Barnett, et al., and Levy, et al., which Duisburg cites to support his claims reveal that phenomenon typical of AIDS research. In the headline and the abstract of the publication things are exactly named, and specific claims are made that are wholly unsubstantiated in a further text. One has only to read the small print of the technical comments. Examples are commented on in Ref. 3, and the pages 16 to 18, to see and understand the misconceptions behind them. When Duisburg lends his reputation and charismatic authority to such duplicitous science with its fatal consequences, without any reflection of the detailed critique, 3, and especially without any analysis in his field of expertise it is very precarious and alarming. The explanation for his contrived insistence with highly technical and quasi-exact vocabulary that contrary to the complete case of Papadopoulos, et al., 3, Comma, there is somewhere out there a comma HIV, detectable only through cloning because cloning is in fact the most rigorous isolation science has to offer for retroviruses. Maybe that, though a genuine retrovirus HIV has never identified, retrovirologist Duisburg Cantor doesn't want to admit it for reasons that may not be obscure. But it is increasingly beyond indulgence that Duisburg piles up claims of 19 complete genomes, complete genetic sequences, of HIV which it has been possible to artificially multiply in the form of clones. Then, to build up theories of probability bereft of significance gives the impression that they all have the same length when no scientist before him has ever claimed this, ever seen such things, or of course ever published such claims. LN the only reference he could have meant. Four, it's enough to read the title Recovery of Virtually Full-Length HIV-1 Progress of Diverse Subtypes from Primary Virus Cultures Using the Polymerous Chain Reaction to understand that Duisburg wildly appropriates references that seem suitable for his purpose without actually knowing them. The cited method, the polymerous chain reaction, 
PCR is not able to construct something like a viral genome. 12. It certainly has to be clarified that concocted and size-selected genetic molecules like HLV-clones can never represent an almost theoretical isolation somehow on account of their lengths being in a proportion of 1 to 100,000 against the length of the full human genetic material. Such clones result from the process of concocting smaller molecules produced in a test tube using the cellular genetics and cellular enzymes, and then to present a whole sequence, uniting the smaller sequences in theory, on paper or in a computer, following a blueprint from the arbitrary rules of retrovirology. LT beggars amazement how one may state. X. Cathedra. That the high standards of virus isolation may be relevant for crystallographers or chemists, but are not relevant for functional isolation, when it is those unspecified HIV proteins created in cultured cells, when HIV researchers tried to induce reverse transcriptase activity, that are used in the AIDS test, which is an instrument of sentence over death and life. What by God is then relevant in this kind of science? not relevant for functional isolation. What for heaven's sake is meant by functional? That the old dash test works when one believes in its function. And it is incomprehensible how AIDS expert Prof. Duisberg continues to discuss AIDS as if there were an autonomous clinical picture which one may call AIDS. Every concerned person knows by now that AIDS has a different meaning on every continent with its different causes. AIDS is an inadmissible artificial diagnosis. It has been legitimized through the introduction of HIV as a constructed cause. The old myth with its exploitation of the fear of an alleged deadly sex plague has been blindly launched into the realm of seemingly scientifically based biological fact through the pseudo-rational HIV detection technique. But the two terms according to the rules of construction depend on each other. The clarification of the question whether HIV exists with the most secure method of identification available, and this would be only the isolation of complete high viruses, is a sine qua non for dismantling the mass delusional trans called AIDS. Only then may the task of research with the needed temperance and precision into the causality of the concrete disease complexes behind AIDS be addressed. 14. The danger that the AIDS-critical movement splits or temporarily weakens over the question whether HIV exists is therefore secondary and in any case subordinate to the right to life of every person. The common matter is to secure the human rights of every stigmatized person, not a personal cult. The human rights do include free and in this case essential access to information, censorship, and worse, misleading for political or personal reasons, be it ignorance or the will not to know is endangering human lives. LT is urgent. The one who comes too late is punished by life. General political knowledge. Those who too late or never receive essential knowledge may die in the throes of an AIDS diagnosis or commit suicide. Sad bad wisdom among state HIV plus S and Poise. That HIV has never been identified as secure biological matter is of the greatest importance and must immediately be told to every stigmatized person. No HIV, no false diagnosis AIDS, no death sentence, no false treatment, no unnecessary suffering, no needless dying, but new chances for people who for complex reasons got seriously ill, amongst them being labeled as AIDS cases and HIV positives at all, and then falling victim to medical short sightedness based on laboratory technical constructs.